to be saved. Let's worship him and thank you. You're our Savior, our Redeemer. Hey. You're our protector and our keeper. Hallelujah. 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 What Come on, let's give the Lord a hand type of praise. Let's stand. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Bless the Lord today. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. I'm going to bless his holy name. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Though my enemies have me surrounded, they stumble and fail. The Lord is a refuge. The Lord is a very present help in a time of trouble. Come on, bless his name today. Bless his name today. I'm going to bless it at all times. His praise is going to always be in my mouth. Come on, bless his name today. His name is holy. He, he's wonderful. He's counselor. He's mighty God. He's everlasting father. And he is the prince of peace. Come on. Amen. Father in heaven, we come to you right now as we offer, we offer our praise to you. And Lord, it's our prayer that our praise is acceptable in your sight. And Lord, if, in order for it to be acceptable, we also must confess our sins. We must agree with you. Uh, no excuses. We are wrong. We what we said was wrong, what we did was wrong, where we went was wrong, our thinking wrong. Forgive us, cleanse us, and then Lord, fresh fill us with the presence and power of your Holy Spirit in the wonderful name of Jesus and all God's people said, and all God's people said, come on, give the Lord another hand clap praise, and all God's people said, amen. It's good to see you tonight. I say, it's good to see you tonight. Amen. We got a lesson tonight. We got a lesson tonight. We hope that this lesson blesses your soul. To change your life, start with your body. You may be seated. To change your life, start with your what? To change. How many people want their lives changed? Amen. Amen. We want to welcome those who are online with us. Amen. To change your life, start with your body. Let me also mention this. Uh, brothers and sisters, continue. We ask you all to continue to wear your mask, continue to keep your distance. Uh, the virus is uh, still in our midst. Amen. Pray for me, if you will. I'll be taking my fourth shot on tomorrow. Amen. I'm already scheduled for shot number four, for those of you 
who believe in the vaccination. Amen. I got to go back to saying what I've been saying, that the a virus was God allowed. God allowed the virus, but thank God he sent the vaccination. Amen. That's what the pastor believes. Amen. And I believe that's what God wants to have me to say. Therefore, Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, say amen. I'm in your life. Listen now. The, the, it starts off by saying what? Therefore, therefore, therefore. Paul said, therefore, I urge you Brothers and sisters, in view of God's what? In view of God's, y'all ain't reading with me. In view of God's mercy, hopefully you're not afraid to say mercy. And let me tell you something, I, I throw myself on God's mercy, amen. In view of God's what? To offer, there it is, to what? Offer your bodies as a what kind of sacrifice? A living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to who? This is your true and proper worship. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, the NIV, New International Version, was what we were quoting for. Therefore, Paul said, therefore, which causes us to look back in chapter 11, chapter 10, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. Let me just kind of pause right there and say this to you. Always keep in view the mercy of God. Did y'all hear that? Always keep in your view God's mercy. What do I mean by God's mercy? God's mer mercy withheld his judgment on all of us who deserve to be judged. I don't know about you. I don't deserve to be pastor. Amen. I really deserve to be a prisoner. Amen. I, I don't. I don't. I don't deserve to be free. I really deserve to be incarcerated. Amen. Uh, but God's mercy gave me another chance. Somebody ought to. I, I don't think I'm the only one. I don't think I'm the only one who ought to be thanking God for mercy. So if you're going to thank God for mercy, keep his mercy in view. Don't ever, well, simply what Paul is saying, never lose sight of the mercy of God. He said, and then offer, offer, offer. Remember this about the word offer. Offer is a word that should be connected to worship. Remember this, the best we can do, brothers and sisters, let's, let's, let's not be presumptuous. The best that we can do is offer God our worship. The best we can do. So in this text, what does Paul say we need to offer? Our what? Bodies. Now watch this. Paul said, offer your body. Offer your body to God. Offer it. Amen. Listen to this. This is amazing, too, in this respect. Uh, if you all are halfway like me, you've done some damage to your body. Isn't that something? Have you ever thought about how ridiculous we can be? You only get one body down here. And, and God uh, spent a whole lot of effort, if you will, to put your body together. And we do things, let me, let me go back to the past, we did things and maybe still do things to destroy the one body that we gonna have. Isn't that something? Is there anybody here who can honestly say you ain't never did nothing to yourself? Did y'all get that? I said to ourselves. We, we do things to ourselves that we know don't help ourselves. So why do we do it? That's why we at church to try to find out. Offer your body. What kind of sacrifice? A living sacrifice. Now let me see if I can unpack that. What is Paul? Paul's reaching back into the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, they had altars where they would put the body of an animal 
and the body of the animal would be used as an offering for worship. Amen? But here's the difference between what Paul is saying now and what I just illustrated. Every, every animal, don't miss this, that was offered to God in the Old Testament was dead. With no, you don't put no live lamb on the altar. You don't put no live bullock on the altar. That animal had been killed, and the blood had been drained out, and then and, and the animal was innocent, an innocent animal, innocent. The animal ain't did nothing wrong. So he, he so so worship was 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 offering and sacrificing an innocent animal to take the place of the sinful person. Are y'all with me here? So Paul uses that and says, I want you to offer your bodies a living sacrifice. What's the difference? Here's the difference. When you offer God your body as a living sacrifice, don't miss this, you can change your mind. Y'all didn't catch it. If you live in, if you're a living sacrifice and you own the the metaphorical altar of God, you can say, you know what? I don't think I'm going to offer God my body today. I ain't, hold on. I ain't doing it today. I, 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 I'm not about to do God. I'm not about to offer. I'm not about to do with my body today that God wants me to do. I'm going to do my own. I'm, I'm going to please myself. I'm going to please my own body. Isn't that how we do it? Folks, you'd be surprised how much we do to please our body. Amen. Many of us, many of us, we don't eat healthy food. No, we, we eat food that make us feel good. They call that comfort eating. You eat, see, when you comfort eating, you eating something that may not even nourish you. But it's going to please you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Did y'all get that? And, and, so, so here we are. God has given us this one body. And we so concerned about pleasing ourselves that we ain't got time to do the right thing. So what can I say? Offer yourself a living sacrifice. And I want to say before we get to the lesson, when you give God your body, don't change your mind. Don't change your mind. What kind? He said, he said, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. He said, now, it needs to be holy. That means you need to set it aside and please it to who? Now, I just, I think I just said we normally do things with our bodies to what? Please ourselves. So, wait a minute. So, here we are. What are we saying? Here it is. Uh, I've discovered that you can't please yourself and God at the same time. No, uh-uh. No. To please God, you got to sacrifice your own flesh. Can I share this with you? Ain't you had enough of it already? Have you pleased yourself enough already? Have you went, haven't we went over, I can say we, not just you, haven't we went overboard enough already? Because ain't it about time for you to think about me? It, it what? Think about me in the view of my mercy, which should have killed you a long time ago. You, you know, God's mercy is not simply him not killing us. It's him not allowing us to kill ourselves. I don't know about you. I've done enough. <laughs> well, I've done enough to myself where well, I will be dead. Are y'all with me here? You do know your body ain't invincible. But we be acting like it. Are y'all with me here? I've heard people say, man, shoot me. No, don't shoot me. Are y'all with me here? No, don't hurt me. Go on and hit me. No, don't, don't hit me. Uh, and then Paul said, this is your true and proper worship. Y'all see that? So what are we saying here as we get started? You cannot worship God without your body being part of it. You can't, hold on, here's what am I saying? 
You cannot worship God only in spirit. You got to be able to worship God in spirit, in truth, and in the body. You know why? Because we in the body. Y'all still with me? Here it is. To change, for change to happen in any area of your life, watch this, you all. Whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, educational, mental, or relational, you have to begin with your physical body. You can't ignore the role that your body plays when you are attempted to make some changes. Y'all follow me so far? All right. So here it is. Here it is. Your body. Now watch this. The lesson is in this. The lesson is in this paragraph. Y'all with me? Your body affects, first of all, your behavior. Your body has something to do, has a whole lot to do with your behavior. Watch this. Here's the lesson. The lesson is in this, in this paragraph. Y'all ready? Watch this. Your muscles affect your mood. Your muscles, you know, we got muscles in our body. Am I right? Your muscles, somebody look at me right now and say, Pastor, I didn't know that. Your muscles affect your mood. Your muscles affect how you feel. And your affect your mood and your motivation. Watch this. Your, your physiology can affect your psychology. What are we talking about? We are talking about, brothers and sisters, where, where the scriptures and science connect. You do know scripture connects with science. Amen. If, if scripture... Uh, disagrees with science, then science is wrong. You got to go back to the test tube. Are y'all with me here? Y'all looking at me straight. So let me see if I can help this. Let me see if I can unpack this paragraph. Let me put it where you can get it. If muscles affect your mood, then you ought to be working out. Because your muscles, remember this, in order for your muscles not to shrink, you got to put some. You got to put some weight on. Have you ever seen people who uh, they may be in bed and can't walk for some months? They can't just jump up and walk. They have to go through some physical therapy to do what? To build up that those muscles that allowed them to walk in the first place. Let me see if I can say something here. Working out, you want to you wanna, uh, write this down. Working out benefits your mental health. You have, you know, we got a lot of issues now with our mental health, right? So anybody who says something about their mental health is unstable or unhealthy, the first thing you need to ask them, do you have a workout plan? Now, your workout plan won't fix it, but it'll help it. Are y'all with me here? Uh, working out, watch this, can boost your mood. If working out can boost your mood, guess what that means you don't need? That means you don't need no caffeine. What do we do? Why, why, why do we drink coffee? To boost our mood. Have you? I got this little thing I talk about. And sometimes it has something to do with some of my classmates, class students in my Sunday school class. I got, some, I got a good Sunday school class. We have 40 people, 30 here and 10 online. We have 40. We, up to, we back up to 40. We used to be at 60. But I got some good, I got some good Sunday school students. Right after 8 o'clock, they'll shoot to uh, Starbucks uh, in between that little 10, 15 minutes. And then when they come back, they come back with, with what I call a caffeine smile. You do, you, you do know caffeine to put a smile on your face. You, have you ever seen people say, oh, I got to go get my coffee. Dude. I got to go be drink coffee. They ain't smiling then. They drink coffee. Say, hey, so what's going on? They come back 
with a caffeine smile. And I want to say to those who need caffeine for a for a, a, a mood boost, just start working out. Y'all with me here? What else? Work out not you not only work working out will boost your mood, but working out will also watch this. It will improve your sleep. Somebody look at me right now, maybe online. You are sleep deprived because you ain't working out. You can't go to sleep. Uh, insomnia, all of that. They got they got medication for that. Uh, you don't need medication. You just need some exercise. Number three, I got some. Well, hold on. Working out can boost your mood, improve your sleep. Watch this. Y'all ready? It can help your depression. Whoa. Here it is. Here it is. Are y'all writing this down? Watch this. Exercise is a depression fighter. Did y'all get that? Working out is what? A depression fighter. It'll help you with depression. It'll help you with anxiety. And it'll help you with stress. If you somebody say, look, I feel all stressed out. Well, take a walk. Just take a walk, go around the corner by yourself. And when you come back, you say, you know, I feel better. This, <laughs> this, this, this is some simple stuff that we hadn't thought about. What am I talking about? I'm talking about again. I'm talking about where scripture and science agree. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, and sisters, in view of God's mercy, I'm on the lesson, offer your bodies, live in sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship in our being. The problem with that living sacrifice is that it can choose to crawl off the altar. People do this all the time. You, you offer yourself to God, and then you take yourself back. Because you, if whenever you offer yourself to God, holy and pleasing, then, then you got to go through uh, some withdrawals of not pleasing yourself. You got to do some cold turkey uh, uh, on the pleasing part. Cause we we pleasure. Well, watch this, you all. I don't, don't don't get mad with me. We are pleasure junkies. We are addicted to it. Y'all with me here? We grew up on it, on, on pleasure, uh, happiness. I preach it on Sunday. I talk about happiness ain't the same as joy. Having fun ain't the same as joy. Let me, let me share this with what I didn't say Sunday. Let me tell you how you, can, how you know that happiness and joy ain't the same. You can be happy uh, when you, hold on, you, most of what makes us happy have some sin in it. Are y'all with me here? A whole lot of fun that we have have some what in it? Some sin in it. I'm on my way somewhere. But there is no sin in joy. Ain't no sin in joy. That's what makes it different than happiness and fun. Now all happiness doesn't, doesn't mean that you have to do something wrong. All happiness, all fun, but nine times out of ten, when you check yourself, there was a little sin involved. You, you, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, sprinkling ah some forbidden salt on your food for some flavor. Whenever we try to have some fun, we sprinkle some some forbidden sin on our fun in order for it to have some flavor. Am I saying anything? Offering your body as a living sacrifice isn't something you need to do just once. No, no, no. You got to do it four, five, or many, ten times a day. Offer your body. Listen, when you get up tomorrow morning, I want you to read uh, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, and say, God, Lord, I, I want to 
I want to start today offering my body to you. Are y'all listening to me? Now, when you tell God that, and you're going through your day, and you start doing something that's not going, that where you then got off the altar, God said, I thought we talked about that. Guess what he said? Get back on. Get back on that altar. Because what you're doing right now is not pleasing to me. So here we are. So, so what is your true and proper worship? The Bible lists three things you can do with your body as acts of worship. I want to ask, add four. I, I basically already said it. The first one, uh, it says cleanse your body, but the first one, I want to add, I want to add another first one to it. Y'all ready? Add this to it. Here's what you do. Exercise your body. I already talked about it, right? Exercise your body. First Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8. Turn there with me. Y'all know the scripture. First Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8. It's a familiar passage. First Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8. It's a familiar passage. You don't, uh, uh, technician, take that one down. I'm not on the cleanse your body yet, okay? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on exercise your body, which is not part of the lesson. I added it to this lesson, amen? So, so and so and so, not to confuse them, take that one down. Okay. Chapter 4, verse number 8. Say amen. All right, now, Paul says to Timothy, he says, uh, for bodily exercise is only a little profit. Y'all see that? That, that? That's what he said. Uh, let me give it to you from another translation. Uh, it's from another translation, chapter 4, verse 8 says, physical training is good, and it has some value. So why did Paul say, you know, pop us a little bit and all that, which, which almost turns us off? you got to read the rest of the verse. Watch this. But godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also the life to come. Y'all see that? What Paul is really doing is contrasting physical discipline. I'm supposed me spiritual discipline with physical discipline. He said, now spiritual dip, dip, uh, discipline will profit you in this life and the life to come. Y'all see it? He said physical, I mean spiritual discipline will help you today and into eternity. Right? But in contrast, physical discipline only profits a little. Why? It will only profit you in right now. Why? Because when we get to glory, God's going to give us what? A whole nother body. Am I right? Say amen. He's going to give us what? He's going to give us what kind? A whole new resurrected body, right? Spiritual body, all of that, right? But we ain't there yet. I'm still here. So, so what Paul is simply saying to us is this. Don't invert the order. You see, there's some workout junkie. But being a workout junkie won't help you spiritually. You can be a workout junkie and be an adulterer, and it won't even bother you. That may be why you're working out. You try to catch at the gym. You ever been to the gym? Well, people be wearing, I'll be like, man, that ain't, that, are, you, are you here for working out? That ain't why you here. You, you trying to catch. Somebody say amen. So, that's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, right? Sister Ren, Sister Ren, let me give you one. Proverbs chapter 31. Y'all know that woman over there? There's a woman in Proverbs 31. Did y'all know that? Huh? Uh, what kind of woman is the, is the woman in Proverbs 31? Come on, what kind of woman is she? And some, people, some say an industrious woman. Some, some say a virtuous woman. And, and all that, right? Am I right? Here's what I want to say in chapter, first, in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 17. 
Uh, there is a workout woman. A woman that's working out. Watch me now. Verse 17. Y'all there? Talking about this woman. She girds herself with what? And makes her arms what? If she making her arms strong, she got to be working them out. It's talking about she got a workout plan. <laughs> She's also not just a virtuous woman. She's a strong woman who knows how to exercise her arm. She, hold on, Ravel, she working with her, her bias and her tribe. You do know your arms got at least five muscles. Am I right? Somebody say amen. So all you say, oh, say okay. <laughs> your arms got at least five muscles. You got two right here. Amen. Those are called biceps, two muscles. And the way you work those is you got to do curls. Right? You do curls and you're going you're gonna to strengthen your what? Your biceps. But then you got three muscles back here. And doing curls will not help your, your three in the back. You got to do something that deals with them. Am I right? You got to know how to. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help you. Amen. You'd be surprised. Can I just share this with you? I'm ahead of my lesson. But a lot of times what I do. I have a, I work out while watching the basketball game. Last, last night, I'm watching the game, right? I did some curls. I did some back arms. I did some push-ups. I did some planks. I did all that in my little office. And then, and then this morning, I did my walk. I got a workout plan. It ain't got you, you, you going to the gym is good, but you can come up with one at your house. Are y'all with me here? You can, be, you can be stronger at the house than some people at the gym if you just know what to do. Amen. Somebody say amen. All right. So that's the first one. So the second one is going to be cleanse your body. So number two, after you train your body, what are you going to do? Cleanse your body. What's that mean? Ah, that means, that means, that means, that means. It's, and it's all right to leave it like that, too, too. Number one, because I added that other one. Cleanse your body. That makes me think that my body is dirty. You can't live in a dirty world and not have a dirty body. Amen. We live in a dirty world. Our world is devilish. It's dirty and it's broken. It'll never get fixed. This world, this world we live in ain't getting better. It doesn't matter who the president is. It ain't getting better. It's, it's, it's dirty, it's broken, watch this, and it's diseased. I can prove it. You sitting out there with a mask on. God has added that to the world. He said, you know, I guess y'all didn't know, understand that you, the world that you're living in is also a diseased world. And, hold on. And God has allowed the disease to be an invisible one, one that you can't see. Isn't that something? That's kind of, I don't want to say scary, but it's, it causes us to be cautious. The world is dirty, it's diseased, devilish, and it's broken. Don't let nobody say, well, you know, things getting better. It ain't going to get better. If you think anything's going to get better, go buy some gas. You have to pray when you buy gas. Because I want to start saying some stuff that ain't holy. Something wrong with going to the gas station and, and have to spend over $150 to fill up my little truck. Are y'all with me here? Now, hopefully, you're getting the bang for your buck. Here's what I'm saying. 
the Lord has blessed me to have a vehicle where I can look at my mileage per gallon. I know exactly what I'm getting per gallon. My truck is getting about 15.1 miles per gallon, which is not great, but it's a big truck, right? Watch this. Here's when I know Deacon Porter that they that, that they just, that they just put a one on the gas. Some of y'all know what I mean by one, but something on the gas. Here's how I know. I'll fill up my truck and I'll be driving. I'll look at my my per gallon meter and it'll be down to fourteen point seven. I said they done mess with the gas. They done mess with the gas. They done cut it. How you know? How did they cut gas? Let me tell you this, and I'm going to move on. The way that they actually cut gas is this way, is this. They don't put the additive in there. Y'all, Tectron, y'all heard of that? First of all, for those of you who may not know, all gas is the same. What's, what's different about the gas from Chevrolet, from Chevron and Shell, they all have their own what? Additive that they put in there to, to convert the gas to what they want it to be. Are y'all with me here? Now, if they don't put that additive in there, it ain't going to increase your mileage. So, so you, mean tell, you can't tell me that gas owners are, are honorable. They trying to hear the lick. Y'all still with me? Let me, let me see if I can get this one here. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. You need to turn, turn in your Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. I know it's on the screen, but uh, I'd like to make sure that we're learning how to navigate our Bible. We, we live in a day, Sister, Sister Wallace and I was talking about whether or not we should buy Bibles for people. I said, don't buy no paper Bible. Ain't nobody buying them. Ain't nobody buying paper Bible. I'm not saying we're not using them, but ain't nobody buying them. Ain't nobody, if you, whatever Bible you have now, it's, it's probably, you probably ain't going to buy no more paper. Anybody going to buy any more paper Bible? No. So I got one. I'm, all, I'm going to heaven with this one. The one I got. I got a bunch of paper Bible, but this is the one I carry with me. Hey, when y'all see how raggedy it's getting? Remember this about a, a raggedy paper Bible. Remember this. Your Bible, if it's a paper Bible, it ought to be raggedy for this reason. A Bible that's coming apart is usually owned by somebody who ain't coming apart. Did y'all get that? Amen. You, you and your Bible ain't going to be coming apart because that means you using it. But if your Bible is still new after 10 years, you probably fall it apart. I've seen some people who had a Bible for kids. They still have it in the box. I said, no, no, no baby. <laughs> you can't keep it like that. That's trying like, to try like eat food with the plastic still on. You got to take that plastic off that food so you can go and cook it. Amen. All right, I'm ready. Y'all ready? Paul said, let us purify ourselves. Uh, let us purify ourselves uh, from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Y'all see that? Now, uh, also there's some translations, just like the New American Standard, the one that I'm using here, and that I have here. It, it, it gives a word in the beginning that helps us to understand what to do, the context. It says, therefore. Are y'all with me? It says, therefore. Whenever you see the word therefore, you got to put it in reverse and go back to discover what is therefore, therefore. Y'all got that? Whenever you go, whenever, let me say it again. Whenever you see the word therefore, amen, you got to put, go in reverse and see what's happening. So when you go in reverse, you understand what Paul was saying that contaminates body and spirit. 
you go back to chapter 6 and start around verse number 14. Y'all there? Let's see what Paul said back in chapter, four, chapter 6, verse 14. He says to the church at Corinth, do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? What fellowship has light with darkness? What harmony has Christ with Belial? That's really the devil. Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Those are all uh, questions, amen, that have an obvious answer of what? No, 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 no. Those are rhetorical, rhetorical questions that have an obvious answer. There, there ain't no harmony between Christ, Christ and the devil. There ain't nothing common between a believer and an unbeliever. They, verse 16, or what agreement has the temple of God with item? None. For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will, I will welcome you, and, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord, of, of Lord Almighty. Therefore, did y'all get it? Amen. All right, now having said all of that, there are two main ways to cleanse your body. I'm going to say that and that's probably be all we're going to do tonight. There are two main ways to cleanse your body. First, you cleanse your body by controlling what you allow in your mind through what you watch and listen to. I can tell you, if you let me be with a person for just a little while, I can tell you what they're thinking. Here's what, I, here's what I'm going to look at. First of all, what you read what you're listening to, and what you're watching will determine what you're thinking. Did y'all get that? What, you, what you're listening to, what you're watching, amen, what you're reading will determine what, how you're thinking. That's what makes up your, watch this, your overall attitude. Have you ever tripped on well, my attitude sure ain't good today. It's because it was so, something in your, in your, in, something going, something going on with things, with what you read and listen to and all of that. You can trace it. So I know why I'm thinking like that. I got up this morning and I did A, B, and C and, and, it, and, and it controlled, it got into my head and this is why I'm thinking like this. Y'all with me? You can also cleanse your body by making good choices about what you what? Eat and drink. Wow. I got a note here. Y'all ready? Here's my note. Here's my note. Stop drinking anything that's got sugar in it. I went to a doctor some years ago. And I left there. I left my doctor understanding something here. And he said it to me. He said, he said it to me like this. He didn't tell me to stop drinking stuff that has sugar in it. That ain't what he said. He just told me stop drinking sugar. I said, what? He said, if you are drinking something that has sugar in it, what you're actually drinking is sugar. You ain't drinking that other because the sugar is more powerful than what the little other stuff. It's the sugar or the salt. He said, so he said, talked about what you are eating and drinking, right? So you stop drinking sugar. And here's another thing my doctor said, stop adding white salt. He said, now it's all right to cook with it. He said, when you cook with salt, you, you actually minimize, you know, it that way. It's not, it's not the same, it's not as powerful once it didn't hit that heat. Y'all with me? He says, but the, most, the thing that's killing most people is called a salt shaker. Watch me now. Watch me now. Um, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't work at, never worked at a hospital. But they tell me 
that 95% of the people that's in the hospital are there because of what they were eating. When you go to the doctor, what, what, what is the doctor, uh, what, what does the doctor normally start talking about? They start asking, what have you been eating? Your diet. And then they start saying, okay, now, leave that alone. You know, leave that alone and leave that alone. And after the doctor tells you what to stop leaving alone, you're like, whoa. You be like, man, 95% of my diet is what he told me I'm going to have to stop. And then and, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you got to change. That goes back to the beginning of the lesson. When you change, you can off, now you can offer God your body, which will be pleasing to him, right? But watch, watch this. But it ain't going to please you no more. Because you ain't going to enjoy what you eat. It's going to take you a while to start. Watch this. God never, he never put food together for us for pleasure. You won't find that in the Bible. To eat to enjoy yourself. They, food, ain't for, food is not for the purpose of comfort. No, it's for the purpose of nutrition. You know how our parents was? I'm, I'm finished. I ain't, I'm finished, but I ain't finished. Uh, you know how our parents, my, my mother, boy, they would, they would cook some, they would go buy some nutritious greens. Them greens would be nutritious. Sometimes they got them out the backyard. Them greens would be nutritious. But after they got through with them, and you just put a big pound of salt pork in there and a, and a, and a, a what they call that, ham hock, salt. It's a big salt. My mother used to have a big salt pork. She'd throw that big piece in that thing. She'd throw it up in there. So now the nutritious green they ain't nutritious no more. <laughs> when, 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 when our parents got through with the greens, it was like putting a big pig in them. It's like no, just, just to put an old pig in there. And then they're going to add some more, some salt. Uh, all, now think about that. But why you say fat back? Hold on. What's, what's healthy about a fat back? I don't care what it's made of. If there's fat in your back, you ain't healthy. You know, you ain't supposed to have no bad back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What else messes us up? Internet, Facebook, pornography, bad doctrine. All of that goes into our mind and messes us up. All of that. They only advertise, well, I should say, oh, they advertise oh, healthy food also. Let me tell you this about healthy food as I shut it down. It costs you more money to be healthy. Somebody says, well, I can't afford to be healthy. Then if it costs more money to buy healthy food, well, I'm going to ask you this, can you afford to be sick? You got to make a choice. Can you afford to be healthy? Or can you afford to be sick? And if you're sick, guess what you're not going to be doing? If you're sick and you got to keep running to the hospital, you don't have time to offer your body as a living sacrifice. You know, God said, can I, can I play God for me? Like, I don't want that. Wait a minute. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us, right? Is he living inside a healthy body or a toxic one? Some people's bodies are toxic dump. Can you some folks, uh, hold, hold on. The Holy Spirit lives inside of many of us, right? And that means he lives inside of, 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 a, of, a, of a chimney because we smoke it. You know, your body wasn't made as a, it, the Bible uses this metaphor. It says your body's a temple, right? That's for worship. It never said it's a chimney. 
a chimney is for what? Fire and smoking. So what are we doing? Here we are. We paying people to do it. How much cigarettes cost right now? How much? Good, good for some of fourteen dollars. Good fourteen, fifteen, right? A pack. Let me share this with you because I'm a child of God. That's the only reason I don't sell cigarettes. <laughs> Can I be sarcastic? Can y'all let me ask some sarcasm? This, I'm just talking. I'm just having fun now. Our church would not have to receive tithes and offering if I could sell cigarettes to the members who smoke. I ain't talking about to the world. Just the congregation. Give the Lord a hand clap, praise. We got to come back because we ain't finished. We're not finished. Amen? We're not finished. Let's do this. Let's worship the Lord and not give it. I want you to think about, before you give, I want you to think about the resources you spend that's unhealthy, on, on things that's unhealthy for your body. Think about that. Think about offering God uh, what you will get offering or pleasing your body with that God ain't pleased with. And come up with an offering that would be acceptable. You know, can I just be honest with you? It's something wrong with giving God a dollar and paying 15 for some cigarettes. Think about how backwards that is. You give God a dollar, but you give the uh, the dope man fifteen. And guess who the dope man is? Whoever's selling cigarettes. Nicotine is a drug. That means that whoever's selling nicotine is a dope dealer. I know. I leave you alone. Okay. 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 Father, have we come to you right now? We ask you to leave me, God. Help us to consider the lesson about change starts with our body. Lord, we, first of all, we need to ask you to forgive us and start appreciating this physical temple that you've given us to be in this world with until we get home. Help us, help us to be generous in our giving. And may the grace of God and sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest with us by henceforth now and forevermore. Say amen. We ask that everyone be a blessing. Your pastor, the white envelope is for me because I don't receive a salary at this church. I, I live on the giving of faithful members. Amen. God bless you. For how we love.